they're like they're really riding that momentum of like we're the underdogs we're you know we our team has been put through the <laughs> What's up? What's I'm up? thinking, Chad. I thought, Chad, you were patting Asher this whole time. It's your dog's fucking tail. <laughs> I'll let her out real quick. Hold on. Good morning, everybody. It is. January 14th, 2022, and the elevator, so to speak, has finally crashed on the bottom floor. I'm here with Jack Cummings and Brad Cummings, who have been my hosts through this entire season. We finally made it. Week 18 of the NFL season, and unfortunately, it's not going to go any further than that, people. Train is at a full stop. The Ravens end up losing the game 16-13 to to the Steelers in a game that really frustrated me. Um, offensively, but we're going to get into that a little bit later in the pod. So I guess I'll start with this. The last time the Ravens had a losing season was the 2015 mm. season, and it was sort of reminiscent of this season in the sense that the Ravens were plagued with some injuries. A lot of key guys went down that year. The Ravens went 5-11. and 11. This team, in an 18-week season, finishes 8-9. and nine. So if you equate it to last year, maybe it's an 8-8 eight eight season or a 9-7 and seven season with massive injuries. The most injuries, guys that have been on IR out of any team this season, right? I mean, they had 23 guys at one point placed in the IR or with COVID or whatever the case may be. So I guess okay. this version of the Ravens is like a punchier 2015 team. What do you guys think of that? Like, it's just there was really, to wrap up the season, the, it, it, it comes down to one word, and that's injury. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember that season. We were devastated by injuries too. There was a whole thing about like, what's our trainers doing and all this kind of stuff. We played that game with the gold pants against Kansas City, and we got our asses handed to us. That was that season. What a shitty season. That was a terrible season. Yeah. Five and eleven. I just, but this season we should have gone a similar way. But we got off real hot. Able to get a one point decision over the Chiefs. You know, got that checked off of Lamar's. You know, list that people have for him that he can't beat Patrick Mahomes. This is a game that's really frustrating because I feel like the Ravens should have won this game. It was a miserable day. It was wet. It was rainy. It was foggy. I mean, it was just the conditions we talked about in the last pod where I said, you know, maybe the Ravens can take advantage of this and they can run the ball. If they're able to run the ball and control the clock, they can take this game away from the Steelers, right? And for whatever reason, we decided that we should have our second string quarterback throw 32 times, 31 times, excuse me, for 141 yards, zero touchdowns, and two pretty devastating interceptions. One was in the end zone. And I'm like, why didn't we just run the ball? I guess that's where we're going to start. So we'll start with Chad. Like, do you think Latavius Murray didn't really get going until the third quarter, but do you think that if if we had just ran the rock a little bit more, maybe we win this game and we don't have to go into overtime and I don't have to owe Brad a dollar? Because Chris Boswell kicked the game when he field goal. Like, right. do you think there's a universe where that should have happened and we could have walked out of here with a win? There is, but I don't think it necessarily fell on us not running as much. I think the two biggest things were the turnover in the end zone. Got to come away with points, man. We lost five of our last six games by two points or less. Yeah. And it's because of all the, I mean, there was three turnovers, two interceptions, one fumble. We should have had that touchdown. And then Marquise Brown dropped a touchdown catch, and we had, to, we had to set up for three points there. Without Lamar, the, I think the biggest thing for the offense was not finishing in the red zone. We could have got so, except for the, the, the Green Bay game was the outlier. All the other games, man, we just couldn't finish. We were, I mean, how many times did our drive stall in the, on the five-yard line in five of those seven last games? I think it's the turnover in the red zone and the dropped the pass by uh, Marquise Brown. Because our running game was doing well. I mean, the first half, Freeman had a couple big runs. Murray got rolling in the second half. The argument of, like, we should have ran more. I get the weather thing. That's a different factor. But, I mean, the Green Bay game, Huntley, he was all over the place passing the ball. We, we rarely ran that game. Giving him the, the opportunity to pass the ball a lot isn't a fault of coaching staff. I mean, he proved that he can do it. Yeah, it was raining. 
and our run game was going well, but we lost because of interceptions, in my opinion. Not because our we not because we didn't run enough and not be able to finish in the red zone. I believe Chad is correct on that. It just reminds me of the game back when Lamar played uh his first playoff game and had all those fumbles and shit, which we were in the game the whole time, but you take you take those turnovers. He had four turnovers, I think, that game Lamar did. We could have actually won that game against the Chargers. But... They put a huge lead on him, and then Lamar started to make things happen in the second half, but at that point, it was just like way too, too late. They, too they late, yeah. Fumbled, but he fumbled it, what, four times? Yeah, mm-hmm. I believe so. Three or four times, yeah. Huntley had two interceptions, one in the red zone, and then that costly fumble where he should have just landed on the ball. Instead, he tries to get up and make something happen. Like, why would you do that in the first place? Like, I get it. You, I mean, they make plays happen all the time with their feet, but something that dangerous, I would just let that shit ride, man. I mean, like, just falling ball. Yeah, I mean, the turnovers is absolutely what did it, and I don't think um, – obviously, you yeah, run the ball, and, and whenever any kind of rainy situation, you want to try and run the ball, but like Chad said, Huntley has proved himself over countless games that he can't fault that thing. There's only so much you can do. When it comes down to it, it's just turnovers and then – that, that allowed them to get back into the game. We were up to three to what three to ten after that long forty six yard touchdown up in the third quarter. Like mm-hmm. like we had our opportunity with just those turnovers really did cost us. Yeah, tur- turnovers and not finishing in the red zone. Tyler Huntley actually ran the ball really well in this game. He had a couple pretty big pops that he, he got loose and he ran down the sidelines. I think one was one was for like twenty plus yards. He was able to the make a play and get out. So him running the ball, there was a play that stuck out to me, especially with how it unfolded. It was the end of the first half. We had the ball. We we're in the red zone. It's second and three. Tyler does this move where I, it's uh, he tucks in, he runs to the left. And I'm looking on the screen, and I'm like, there's just no – if he just cuts to the right, he's in the end zone. There's nobody there. Instead, he, like, runs to the left and runs directly into three different gold-colored uniforms. And I'm like, Tyler, that, that could have been the difference between settling for three points and going in 3-3 three three or being up 7-3. to three. And a game that's decided by three points, it's like, I almost thought that Tyler was, was if he just makes that cut, that's a touchdown. And we're talking about right. Tyler Huntley having a rushing touchdown um, it, he didn't, obviously. Like, we're not going to talk about things that uh, didn't happen. I, I thought the turnover with the fumble was definitely on him. Why not just lay on the ball? Yeah. Um, but some of these sequences, it's like, why are we deciding to throw the ball when we're inside the five and TJ Watt is on the side that you're, you're trying to throw the ball to? You know, like, he was disruptive again in this game. It was the same thing that happened in the first Steelers game. Where, you know, in that case, he disrupted the two-point conversion. Here, he made a huge stop on third down because we're trying to run. We're trying to throw the ball inside the five. Like, we have Latavius Murray, who ended up being real hot in the second half. And I, I wonder in this game, like, if he had gotten the ball a little bit more. And I understand why they gave him. He's been balling out all year. Mm-hmm. Um, but right. it makes me wonder, like, there's a universe where they let Latavius Murray pound the rock because they realize how easy it is for Devonta to slip around guys. And they're like, well, if we get this giant 6'4", 250 dude just running north-south down the field, good things are going to happen, right? Like, I don't know. It just felt like a good game where they should have ran the ball a little bit more. Because I think certain plays, you know, we can walk away with more points than just, than just 13 points. Especially when the defense played absolutely amazing. Yeah. The one bad thing about defense, though, Tyus Bowser got hurt. And he might potentially be out. They were reports were saying that he might be out until the middle of next. <clears throat> yeah, I saw something that said nine to ten months. Can we talk about this real quick? There was an article in ESPN that suggested that maybe there should be an internal investigation into the Ravens' uh, medical practices, just considering how many injuries that they sustained this year. Uh, they they want to call for an inquiry about why so many injuries were sustained. Was it a field issue? Is it a training issue? Do you think that that's necessary in this case? I would say, like, the last time this happened was 2015, but that was, like, seven years ago, and I don't think they reviewed them then. So do you think there's any merit to that? Do you think that that's something that should be looked into in the offseason? And do you think it will be looked into by outside people trying to get some answers? 
uh, I don't know. Personally, I feel like that's just people reaching. I mean, I get it. Yeah, a lot of people got hurt. But unless it was like consecutive years, like, I mean, last time you said it happened was, what, seven years ago? Six years ago? Seasons ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, if it was back-to-back seasons and people getting hurt like that, sure, look into it. But, like, I just feel like people are just reaching for an answer. Like, just accept that people get hurt. It's a dangerous sport. I don't think you have to look into it. That's Like I said, it's just people reaching. Chad, what do you think? Um, I think there, uh, I, I believe after the 2015 season, there was kind of a change in the athletic training coaching staff. But yeah, like Brad said, if shit happens, if it, if it's consecutive years, if, I mean, we'll see if next year is the same way, then that's a big red flag it is what it is, man. We got just like, what can you, what can you do? The Tyus know. Bowser injury makes this kind of interesting, right? Because if it's true that he's not coming back until the middle of the season, then it is sort of stretching into next year. The Ravens are getting affected two years into the future with one of the primary defensive players on their line. I don't think it should be investigated. I don't think anything malicious is going on. I do think maybe the Ravens needed to to get together with their, um, their medical team. Maybe there's a way where they could run practice a little bit better. I mean, this is fucking John Harbaugh. He's, he's one of the analytics guys in the NFL. You think the doctors came to him with some numbers saying, hey, if you put pads on for this practice and not this practice, maybe you limit, or if you adjust the field a certain way for this group of, uh, of players and adjust it a different way for others, maybe you would have less injuries on the field. I don't know. I don't know what the science yeah. is behind that. The only two injuries that I could say are like, where you're like, what the heck's going on? It's the you know, the Gus Edwards and the Marcus Peters ACL tears in the same practice. And all the other injuries happened, like, on the field, right? Like, J.K. No. Dobbins happened in the preseason game. We saw that. Marlon Humphrey happened in the Steelers game. We saw that. Pius Bowser happened last week. Deshaun Elliott, we saw that happen. There's all been of a, all the in the game. Yeah, well, uh, Ronnie Stanley was a lingering ankle surgery issue. Uh, Nick Boyle was hurt from the previous season. Just, I mean, most of the stuff happened in games during games, except for the, t- yeah. the two outliers of Gus Edwards and Marcus Peters. So it's like, what, what can you, what can you really look into? I guess. Right. I mean, I, I the only thing I can think of is like, are these guys eating right and, and their ligaments? Like that's the only thing I can really. But that's a, that's a reach. I would accept like uh, talks about looking into something. If it was back-to-back weeks or every other week we had five to ten people out with COVID and then go ahead and look and make sure that they're making – they're doing it right for, like, COVID protocol, that wasn't the case. I mean, like, you could do right. something – you can look into something like that. When it comes to injuries, it's going to happen. Shit happens. Like, I feel like there's always one team that is just decimated every, uh, uh, one year by injury. It just so happened that it was the Ravens. So, yeah, we've, we've and, been a the, big, and a big name Lamar Jackson was out before game. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's kind of tough. Chad, do you want to say something? Yeah, I was just saying, like, we happen to be the number one team in, twice in the past six years with the most injuries. So is, right. that a, is, that a, is that a pattern? I mean, but that's, that's a five, six-year gap. I guess what you're saying is there's been no incidents in between then that would suggest that there's a pattern. You yeah. know, like... Yeah. I don't know. It's hard because you hear about other teams that complain this year about being banged up. You know, like I think the Broncos at one point, they were like, oh, we just don't have anybody on our squad. And it's like, yeah, OK, like, have you looked over at Baltimore lately? Right. Like, I don't really want to hear it. You know, yeah. and we ended up going eight and nine. So, yes, I mean, yes. the bottom just completely fell out at the end of the season. Um, but uh, what can you do? I thought other than that, though, the defense, if we want to talk about them real quick, you know, Stone. Not an interception. I've loved him. I, you, I've talked about him on this podcast before. Yeah. I'm excited to see him get his moment. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And other than that, I mean, they held the Steelers a lot. The Steelers are a banged up team. They're, I would argue, they're the worst team in the playoffs right now, just given their circumstance and who they have to play against. Um, I Ben Roethlisberger said it's up. Like, let's just go out there and have fun. Yeah, I saw that. I never heard. I never heard a starting quarterback say that. It's such. It's so. Like Ben Roethlisberger, you, you can you can okay. tell he's like I'm done, man. Like, this yeah, is, I'm, right. It's, all, like, it's awesome. We playoffs. yeah, it's awesome. I beat the Ravens my last game, and we made the yeah. playoffs. That's an awesome send off. But mm-hmm. there ain't no way we're beating the Kansas City Chiefs. Is the way he's looked at it. Oh, hell, hell no. Yeah. It sucks because he's gonna get his butt kicked in Arrowhead. It's just and like oh, yeah. it's not even, he's gonna be on the road. You know, it's how he yeah. should go down on the road. 
It should have happened on the road against us. I know. I, say, I know. And it, it never happened. Ran the ball more, maybe. You never maybe, know. Yeah. Can you believe I was talking about John Harbaugh as a coach of the year candidate? Talk about something that year. I got totally wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, as I the mean, events unfolded later on in the season and he started not making two point conversions and yeah. sort of fell off the tracks. Yeah, you, you definitely jinxed this. Uh, listen, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was definitely wrong about some things. Do we want to talk about that real fast? This is going to be a good topic. Things we were right and things we were wrong about. Sure. I really want to talk about the things that we were wrong about. I feel like there are a lot of shows on YouTube that don't do that. And they just talk about all the things that they got right. And yeah. I, I find it more interesting the things that we got wrong. It's funny because analytics really, I think he relies on analytics a little too much. I think we should run the ball when we're inside the five. We shouldn't rely on our second string quarterback to be throwing touchdown passes. When it has not fucking worked, in situations where we've needed to do it. How many failed two-point conversions do you need to see on a pass play to be like, hey, how about we hand the ball to Latavius Murray and walk out of here with something? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. I was totally wrong about that. Is there anything that you guys – I mean, I think you both were wrong that Justin Tucker doesn't deserve $20 million a year. You're definitely wrong about that. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think Hardball um, agreed with us. I mean, he didn't use his foot. He said he wasn't worth it. I don't yeah. trust this man. I don't trust those one points. No, whoa, whoa, don't put that out there. You don't need. Whoa, whoa. what do you want from me? There. There's some bad juju going on with. That's with not what I said. That's what Hardball said with his actions. And every and it's like every time I saw Justin Tucker go out there, I was like, oh, we're gonna get three points, and he would get the three points. And it was, you know, maybe I was wrong about that. Here's something I was wrong about too. I tried to make an argument for going for it on two during the Steelers game and the other games. And I'm starting the more, the how this season unfolded, I was like, why in the world did I think this team who can't pass, who is a second string quarterback and can't pass the ball in the end zone, why did I think they were going to get a two point conversion? I don't, you must be hanging out with Harbaugh too much. I tell you what, every time I saw Tucker come on, I was like, yes, field goal, three points, one point, whatever it might be. Every time I saw Mr. Analytics Harbaugh say, back, back, Tucker, I was like, oh, we're losing today. You know what I'm saying? When he's telling Tucker to go back on the sideline, we're going for it. I'm like, all right, we're losing today. Especially with some of the other things that play out <laughs> in some of these games, like the Chargers game. It, apparently, the, Ra- the Raiders were going to like be okay with the tie because they were going to get in anyway, and they were in overtime, and they were like, well, we could just like run the clock out, and then we both get in. Brandon Staley called a timeout. Yep. And the Raiders were like, all right, well, if you're going to give us 35 seconds, like, well, fuck it. Like, let's go and try and win. Rich Bisaccia was like, fuck it. Let's go try and win the game. They go and they win the game. And the yeah. Chargers are now out of the playoffs because of it. And it's yep. like, yeah. oh, you analytics guys, you got to be fucking careful how you use this shit. Yeah. Go, with well, that your, co- go with your instinct. He, too. He, yeah, that coach, he had a, he had a hardball incident too, though, when he, uh, they played Kansas City, and he went for it four times, I think three times within the five-yard line on fourth down, and then another time uh, after that or before that, which was he was just on their side of the field. It wasn't anywhere close. They could have kicked the field goal if they wanted to, and they lost the game by three points. They were over four on all of those fourth downs, but he went for it every single time for whatever reason. I was like, you're an idiot. It's like, this is, I, this is fucking good at it. Like, what if, what if your team is just not good at it? The analytics, like, take that into account? Like, your team just stinks at trying to convert fourth down? Like, right. it's something you need to address? Yes. I, I don't know. I, I enjoy looks, analytics. It looks I bad. Something, but don't rely on it as your modus operandi. It's going to get you fucking fired. If you don't have yeah. the street cred, Harbaugh's got the street cred. So he'll never get fired. He's won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Brandon Staley at the Chargers is not. Mm-hmm. They're competing with the Rams to try and get fans into a, a stadium they're sharing. And they don't have time for this shit. The Rams are in the fucking playoffs. Rams, I mean, it's looking dire for San Diego. They got the pieces in place, but if Staley makes more of these like analytics-based decisions that they don't work out, he's got to be fucking careful about his but job. None of the analytic decisions this year have really panned out in big moments for us. So, no. And it, the, the two big things are the 
uh, two point conversions to try to get the win instead of the tie. I don't I know. I just wish I could be in his head. I wish I could be in Hardball's head and be like, is he doing his analytic things because he thinks it's right, or is he trying to be the coach that makes a difference and makes a um, a change in the NFL in the way that people um, see the game and play the game out through? You know what I'm saying? Like, he just yeah. trying to be that person that makes that step to change the game because, like, there's a lot. Like, dude, he, he made a lot of stupid. Things. Like, I know I'm sitting on the couch watching it, eating pizza, getting fat, or, you know, I'm spending money to watch a game. He's making money to coach a game. But, dude, I could see that from here that you're making some dumbass decisions. Yeah, and you're making some fucking dumbass decisions. decisions that you just can't follow along with logically because you've seen for decades that if you do something, it tends to work. Yeah. You know, like I, I, running the ball inside the five. You know, yeah. if you've got, if you've got, if it's first and goal, run the ball until you get in the end. If you are going to get in the end zone, head coaches are dropping left and right, dude. Uh, Miami fired fucking Brian Flores. What are they thinking? Uh, Matt Nagy's gone in Chicago. Uh, they they fired David Culley here recently for the Texans. He's there less than a year. The Giants fired Joe Judge. It's Squid Game out there, boys. We're not losing our head coach, but Greg Roman and Wink Martindale. Do you think they're shopping around for head coaching jobs right now? Is there a job that they would want? I don't think there's a job out there they want to take on. Really, I don't. I I haven't heard anything about them being interviewed or anything. I the only person I've heard. About being interviewed is Joe Ortiz for the GM job at Giants. He's basically what Eric DaCosta was to Ozzie Newsom. Joe Ortiz is Joe, Joe Ortiz is the Eric DaCosta's secondhand man. For years, people were trying to get Eric DaCosta out of Baltimore, offering all kinds of money. The Ravens organization, the scouts they have, they're known as the top of the league of evaluating talent and drafting players for their team. So they. Everything but receivers, exactly. Um, but yeah, they're they're highly sought out. I hope he doesn't go because I like him being on our team. But but yeah, I haven't I haven't heard anything about the coaches. Uh, I know that I know that year that we went fourteen and two. Everybody was trying to get Greg Roman and Martindale, but it didn't work out. So, but after going eight and nine, I haven't heard anything. Have you guys? No. I, I mean, I think that what happens is the ESPN gets together and they're like, okay. Who are some big names that we've been broadcasting about all year on Monday Night Football or CBS has talked about or Fox has talked about? And I think those two guys are always kind of thrown in there because, you know, Greg Roman was successful with San Francisco. Wink Martindale has an interesting style, and the Ravens defense usually ranks pretty high um, towards the end of the year uh, consistently for quite some time. I think their names are just sort of thrown in there. Gotcha. There are a lot of names out there. Like, the Dolphins fired Brian Flores. I, I fucking cannot believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, that is just one of the dumbest. They always seem to make these moves that are good, and then they never wait long enough for them to, like, mature and grow out. The Dolphins are, like, in win-now mode for whatever reason. They, and I, there, apparently there was a power struggle going on. Power struggle, yeah, I heard that too. He wanted more uh, decisions. Brian Flores wanted to make more decisions, and the GM that had been there for, like, 20 plus years mm -hmm. no. Yeah, they chose the GM over the coach. So that's what I, that's what I read too. All right, let's talk playoffs. The playoffs that we're not in, and the playoffs that Ben Roethlisberger somehow is. I just that game frustrates me so much when I think about it. Watching Artson Wentz completely burn down every single team he's on. I've been on this podcast hammering the Colts for weeks now about oh they're a lock to make the playoffs. There's no way they're not making the playoffs. Artson Wentz had one of the worst fucking games. Like, every time I saw a highlight from that game, it was Carson either getting sacked or throwing a pick. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, two and 14, and you're letting, they're going to have the number one pick in the draft this year. And that, they didn't make the playoffs at all. They didn't yeah. make the playoffs at all. I mean, if you talk about the Ravens being dead, at least we have, like, an excuse. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Colts have no excuse. But you, Chad, you, you said, oh, well, the Colts, they're 0 and 6. They're 0 and 6 in Jacksonville. So uh, well, I pulled the brakes on that. And I was like, there's just no way, though. That team is way too good. Carson was playing well. And Carson turned to Arson. Look what we have. So we had a shot to get in. Instead, Pittsburgh beat us. And they're the ones who got. The, and then the Raiders Chargers game, the way that ended, that could have ended in a tie. And Pittsburgh wouldn't have made it at all. But 
I guess Ben Roethlisberger continues his ride. It's going to be them against Kansas City in the first round. They had the line. I think the last time I saw it was uh, Steelers plus twelve and a half. I think they cover. I think the Chiefs. I think this yeah. is the way Roethlisberger is making it. Sound. What do you guys think of that game? Do you guys, is there any way the Steelers win this game? No. 45-13, no. Chiefs. Not at all. Five thirteen. I'm not. I'm not getting. I'm not going to give you a score, but it ain't going. It ain't going to be close. I That's was going to say. Score. I was going to say twenty-eight seventeen in favor of the Chiefs. I'll give you thirty-four ten. Okay, so can we talk about the last time they played? Sure. The last okay. time they played was two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Kansas City blew them out at home, thirty-six to ten. Mahomes threw twenty-three of thirty, two hundred and fifty-eight yards, three touchdowns. But Najee Harris ran well, but he looked injured. He looked like he banged his hand up in the uh, oh, race. Yeah. Hand, yeah. elbow, something, yeah. He was out for a significant portion of the game, and that was a big question mark in that game, uh, whether he would be – he did come back, I think. He did come back at the end, yeah. Um, but the Chiefs at this point, like, the score ended up being 36-10, to 10, but the Chiefs at one point were up 30 to nothing. I mean, they just blew, they blew the doors off of them. They've had some injuries recently. Tyreek Hill uh, with his – uh, heel injury. They were talking about that a lot, but it looks like he's going to be back for the game. Um, I don't know about their running backs, though. Todd Edwards Lair has a shoulder injury, and they're being real hot about it. So. But they I got enough. Know. Their backups are cool. Yeah, I think so, too. I, I, I just think with Patrick Mahomes, the way he's slinging it, those guys are clicking right now, and I just the Steelers just limped into the playoffs. Like, do we really think that Ben is going to be able to outduel them? Absolutely not. If they beat if they beat the Chiefs this week, I will not watch another game of football because it will make no sense at all. Uh, what do you think about the Titans, though? The Titans. Every back, that team is going to be problematic with the week's worth. The, the Titans rest. are off this week. Right. That, so what oh, I'm yeah. saying is them going into the divisional round, we already know they're going to go to the divisional round. Yeah. If they get Derrick Henry back, you know, even to 90%, that team is going to start him, and they're probably, they could win a few games, I think, the Titans. Yeah, they haven't. I mean, they've been good even since Henry got hurt. I mean, they've still they've been playing good. They're running back. They've been running fine. It's just whether or not their defense can hold up. I, yeah, and it, their defense has been problematic. I mean, they're definitely one of the weakest one seeds we've seen in a while, just in terms of record. You know, I mean, they were, what, 12-5 this year? Mm-hmm. That's your number one seed. I mean, look over at the NFC and look who's holding the holding the number one seed in that particular conference. And Aaron Rodgers, they're fourteen and three this year. I mean, they're just they've been dominant. Um, but I don't know. I just I don't think I think Ben's done. I don't think he cares if he wins this game or not. I think he's ready to go. I think the Steelers are ready to reload, and I think they can walk out being happy they made the playoffs. Good for them. Mm-hmm. We'll watch next week. Big Ben will win, and we'll talk about how he's going to go on a Super Bowl run. Or something. Can we talk about Raiders Bengals seriously? So the Raiders, they have won every single game for the past four weeks, um, yeah. and and I didn't realize that they were in the hunt. They were a team that we kind of I poo pooed them because I thought the Colts surely would be able to beat Jacksonville at home. Yeah. Um, they don't, and now the Raiders are in. It's going to be the Raiders at the Bengals. Uh, what do we? think of this one like i think it's really interesting that the raiders have gone through all this adversity this year and with an interim head coach they're in the i mean maybe rich Passaccia if he beats the Bengals on the road in cincinnati he might be able to keep his job um there's a lot on the line what do you guys do you think the raiders have any shot in this game no i think they can yeah yeah i do too the last time they played was in week 11 the Bengals won 32 to 13. The quarterbacks were okay. It wasn't anything crazy. Like the Raiders got a lot of penalties. They had seven penalties for 77 yards. And the, the Bengals, they only had one penalty all game. So that's what ended up tipping some of these um, possessions that they had. But I, I would say the Bengals are the more talented team. But they are. But at the same time, like the Raiders have played really well in close games this year especially here down the stretch. A big thing for me, too, is we don't know the status of the Bengals' field goal kicker. So Evan McPherson, he's got a groin injury that he's dealing with. 
When they played in week 11, he accounted for 12 points for the Bengals. Mm-hmm. And a groin injury is something that's sort of hard to play through, regardless of what position you're in. It, it's especially hard to play through if you're a kicker, I imagine. So I don't know if he's injured and they can't convert points because they miss a field goal or something about like that. And they give the Raiders good field position. I trust their offense enough to maybe beat the Bengals. Is there something that I'm missing? Is is Oakland like or not Oakland? Is Vegas? Do they have injuries they're dealing with? Like I don't know. I give them a realistic shot to win this game if I'm a betting man myself. You know they've gone through Gruden resigning situation, Henry Ruggs. Another one of their teammates had a DUI recently. They've had this interim coach, and they've been like rallying around each other. And Derek Carr has been, you know, shown pretty, pretty decent leadership. Chargers are in their division, so they know them very well. But they just beat, a, you know, a high-powered offense in the Chargers. Um, so I don't, I don't think them beating Cincinnati is out of the question. Because, but I mean, if I had to put my money on, I would give it to Cincinnati. But I think the Raiders have a shot. The line is set at um, Cincy minus five and a half. So, I mean, but I don't know, man. I, what Bengals team are we getting? Are we going to get the Bengals team that, you know, hung in there with the Chiefs? Like, everyone's making a big deal about Joe Burrow breaking the passing record. And it's like, dude, he played against a team that had both of their starting corners out, both their starting safeties. We had one coming back off of IR. The other was out. We were shuffling guys through the deck. Everyone sort of missed that side of the story. Like, the Ravens had no one on defense to play. Of course, he threw for 500 yards. He got fucking yeah. Jamar Chase catching the ball for it. With the Bengals, they lost to the Jets this year after they gained some momentum after beating us. Which team am I going to get? It's Joe yeah. Burrow's first time experiencing playoff football. The Raiders have Max Crosby. If he's healthy... They can get to him. They can create a sort of pass rush. Uh, the weather is going to be 29 degrees in Cincinnati and overcast. I don't know. If I'm a betting man, I wouldn't, I would look, take a hard look at that Raiders because the, I, I just don't know about the Bengals. They're only, they've got the same record, people. It's not like there's this huge, I think they're overstating the difference in talent, but it's not like the Raiders have bums. I mean, Zay Jones has been playing really well for them. Um, I don't know, man. Brad, do, like, do you think, I, I guess you're on the side that, like, the Bengals are going to beat them, right? Yeah, I don't think they have a chance in hell. The team, that team's too offensively too good. Joe Mixon is going to run all over them. Their run defense isn't even that good. And then you got Higgins and Jamar with Burrow. Just, I mean, he's, he's playing pretty good football right now. So, Can I give you the uh, outcomes of the last five games for both of these teams? So for the yeah. Bengals... They lost to San Francisco in overtime. They beat Denver at Denver, but it was 15 to 10. It's not like the offense put up a shit ton of points in that one. They crushed Baltimore because Baltimore's defense is, was completely inept at that point. They barely beat Kansas City at home. They beat them by three points. And then they, they rested all their guys and they lost to the Browns. Right. 21 to 15, which fucked up another prediction I had. I thought that they were going to lose out the rest of the season. And because the Bengals didn't start their guys, they won. So sort of a side loss. But here's the Raiders' last five. They get the blow, the doors blown off them. They beat Cleveland 16 to 14 in Cleveland. They beat Denver 17 to 13. They beat the Colts by three. And they beat the Chargers in overtime by three. That tells me that that's a team that's going to hang in every single, they're going to fight you tooth and nail. And they have enough talent to pull off a win. I think they can do that against Cincinnati. It just depends on which Bengals team shows up, right? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. if it's if it's the one that you know blew out Cleveland, then maybe we have a we have a different story here. But I'm not convinced that the Bengals can do that. Not yet. I feel like next year in the playoffs, they're going to make maybe the AFC Championship game. They could. Yeah, don't say that. Oh, I know. Ravens it, it fucking sucks, dude, but I really think with the collection of talent, it depends on what they do with their free agents in the offseason. Because they do have a lot of free agents. They gotta Way too early prediction. It's a good one. Yeah. I, you, you can call me out on it later. I'll tell you that much. Like the Ravens, Ra- Ravens, Bengals, and the AFC Championship, is that legal? That would be interesting. Is that, is that legal? Can it happen? Yeah, I guess it. I guess it depends. We played. On season, we right? played the Steelers in the AFC Championship games multiple times. We lost. Uh, we lost all. We lost all. This motherfucker. 
Okay, anyway, the other matchup in the AFC is New Buffalo, England at New England Buffalo. At Buffalo. Uh-huh. New um, England is fading, y'all. Yeah. They don't look good. They've they've gone one and three in their last four games. Their defense is what's good. Their offense is just shoddy. I mean, all they have really is their running back. They are yeah. having the same problem that Arizona's having right now. They're fading towards the end of the playoffs. I think it's going to be an early exit for them, and I feel like Buffalo is ascending right now. The first game that they played, you can throw out because that was the wind game. Do you mm-hmm. remember that game where it was like it was just it was a primetime game? I think people were watching it, and the wind was so bad that they ended up just like I think Mac Jones threw like three passes. Yeah, so, three passes. So do we like put much stock in that game? It's kind of hard to evaluate if uh, if they had an edge or not. But it's gonna it's um, gonna be a, it's then, gonna be a cold, crazy game. That what's the weather like? I heard it's gonna be like. Sub last 20. time I checked, it was sub twenties. I heard fifteen the last time I checked. Yeah. It's gonna be five degrees. It's gonna be a yeah. Saturday night game. Ooh, be a, yeah, Saturday be a, night. The but it's the the Bills are at minus four and a half. I wonder if they're gonna be like the Bills can never have any more playoff home games. Because remember last year when we played them, field goal wasn't even an option. Um, and it was like a low-scoring game. I, I imagine this game is going to be a low-scoring game because of the weather. Yeah, I'll never pick up another Buffalo player for fantasy. I'll tell you that right now. Just because of the way the weather – you never know what the weather is. Yeah. I had yeah. I had Knox. I had the kicker. And I, my last game, I started them both. And it was another shitty-ass day. And they didn't even throw – it was another windy day. Yeah. So my – players didn't get no points because they don't you never know what's going on up there how happy you know, do you think tennessee is that they got the number one seat it's like okay we're gonna be home the entire time thank god we don't have to play in fucking buffalo yeah right yeah, like or, that or kansas beautiful. city yeah or kansas city Absolutely. well you know what the tennessee, tennessee probably doesn't care because they don't even sling it anyways all, all they do is run so they probably I mean, they're kind of built it. for cold weather right yeah that's a good yeah. point that is a very good point but they get that um, they get that week of rest to get henry back involved that, th- that worked out. That worked that. out perfect for them. For yeah. sure. As a football fan, it's just excited to see him coming back. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everything. See, for the New England game, it just seems like the one. I guess the one thing that I'll say is like, like what worries me the most. With Buffalo is they can't run the ball. Josh mm-hmm. Allen accounts for a lot of the yards that the Bills get rushing. He's got seven hundred and sixty-three rush yards this year. Yeah, it is crazy. And then you're just like throwing your quarterback into there. I, Josh Allen is like an oak tree, and I get it. But I don't want Josh Allen's career to be like Cam Newton's, where Cam Newton yeah. is now 31, 32. He's not in the league anymore. And it looks like he's lost the throwing mechanics in his arm. Like, I, I don't want that for Josh Allen. They need to be able to run the ball a little bit more effectively up there, and especially with playoff football. If it's going to be five degrees, do you really want your quarterback running run plays? And getting creamed by linebackers and then having to hit the hard ground in Buffalo. Also, not somebody like you don't want somebody like Josh Allen doing that. He's the future of your franchise, and you finally got a guy. You finally got yeah. a guy that can get you a Super Bowl. You finally got a guy that puts you in a position where you have home field advantage in the play. That's the one thing that I that I'd point to to be like, ooh, I don't know if I like that even going forward in the playoffs. But and Damian Harris for the Patriots is tearing it up here recently too. Um. He's been a very good back for them. But Mac Jones is going to have to throw. And I don't know if Mac Jones is ready for playoff football. So do we have a score for this game? Does anybody? I have my score for this one is 24-20 Buffalo. I think they take it. I'm going to say 17-10 Buffalo. Whoa. Uh, let me see. I will say 27-20 New England. You have New England winning? Yeah. Not your fault, dude. I'm not betting you anymore. I, I owe you a dollar. I'm not betting you anymore. I can't do it. 27 20. They, they could win. New England could win. I mean, they got Bill Belichick as a coach. And if Damian Harris is running the ball okay, maybe they control the clock and Mac Jones doesn't have to throw too much. If, if, mean, if you would have told me at 8 and 3 we were going to lose out and not make the playoffs, which Ben did say that. After the Steelers game, Ben said, we're going to lose out. Granted, he, he didn't know Lamar would get hurt, and he didn't know we would have the COVID game against uh, Cincinnati. 
Right. I think you. I think you just got lucky with those injuries. Get whoa. Hey, you, you said we're going to go on a six-game losing streak, and the only reason it happened was because Lamar got hurt and the Cincinnati COVID thing. I don't think. Right. I don't think we. Lo- I don't think we missed the playoffs if Lamar is healthy, and we don't have the COVID out. We we yeah. win. We win two of those games at least. We definitely win the yeah. Steelers game. We, we definitely Steelers win the Steelers game. game. The last Browns one. game. Yeah. We def- and we Steelers, and, Steelers and Browns are the only ones I'd say. We only lost by one point against the Rams. We lost by one point against Green Bay. I thought the Browns were going to completely lose out. You know what? They almost did. I, I think that the way the season ended, we ended last in our division, finishing eight and nine as a final, as, as your final record. Like I said, they're a punchier version of the 2015 team. They got yeah. a little bit more. They've got more stuff going on with them. Their roster's better for sure. So we've got Lamar's contract coming up, and we've got um, Marquise Brown's contract. His options coming up. I, yeah, I think I think Lamar signs the fifth year option. I don't think he has the leverage right now after missing the last six weeks. No, I, I say he. I say he want, I think he would want to be like, yeah, give me the 23 mil. 24 mil, whatever it is. It's 20. Yeah, it's going to be roughly 24 mil. 24 yeah. mil and then prove it deal, kind of like what Joe Flacco did. It just stinks that we couldn't win while he was cheap. You know, Kansas yeah. City got a Super Bowl out of Mahomes when he was cheap, and then yeah. they got to restructure his contract in a way where it was favorable for all sides. With this negotiation, it's kind of funky because now his what what's up with his ankle? I mean, he's sitting on He'll the sidelines, joking and joking with guys, and it's like, what is the st- what is going on with this? Hey, bone bruises take a while, man. He'll be he'll really? be fine. It's not. I don't think it's going to be a issue going forward. Like he'll rest up. Bone bruises take a while. Yeah, and it's an ankle, and he. I mean, he's mobile. So I would pick up the fifth year option if I was him too. If he's because right now he's making like five million dollars a year. <clears throat> he would go up to twenty four million on a prove it deal. He comes back healthier well rested take over the rest of the season he gets all of his weapons back you know it just kind of makes sense for him to sign the fifth year option and then push the negotiation but, down the yeah road. but i think i think the ravens are going to want to sign him long term soon it'd be cheaper right now wouldn't it he, they would be able to do what you're saying with Mahomes. they'll be able to back end it or whatever they want to do they could they have a lot more leeway you know they'll be able to like give him cheaper up front back end the deal Right. Um, other, otherwise, twenty. If they, he if he signs the deal for the fifth year option, then that's twenty four million against your cap next year. But the cap goes up. It does the go, up. Yeah. go up next year. Because this is yeah. the only year that the cap goes down. I mean, the cap goes up every single year, but obviously yeah. because of the pandemic, they couldn't but, factor in. And that means price. And stuff. that means players' salaries go up too. So kind of like, do you want to negotiate now when the cap is low, so it's less of a cap hit? after june 1st exactly and then and then you can you you can they can always restructure his deal i mean the way that i've seen his negotiation his negotiation play out is both parties seem to be pretty laissez-faire on it um for different reasons i guess um but his contract and then there's third marquise brown they have to decide whether they want to pick up his fifth year option absolutely not they won't it's 13 million it'll it would cost to pick him up he yeah. should make thirteen million for the rest of his career, and that's it. Did you see the the play at the end of the game where he was should have caught it and he should have stayed in bounds and Minka Fitzpatrick pushed him out and everyone was like, "Oh, Minka Fitzpatrick, what a great play!" And it's I looked at it and I was like, "Fucking Marquise Brown, man!" Like Rashad Bateman makes that catch. Yeah. yeah, it was a good play, but Mr. Babyhand should have called that. That I'm ball, not, yeah, and I'm tired of it. I'm he's tired too, of it. He, he's I don't like him. He's a child. He's a child amongst men. Like that, but he when he caught that ball, he caught like this, and it was up against his chest like this. The ball was half the size of his body. That, that's a that's a fucking issue. All he's good for is running down the field and hoping that he beats his defender, or just sitting inside of his zone and getting the ball. I would argue he's terrible at that. I think what he's good is sitting in zone. He sees his own he does. He's sitting in zone. He finds he finds little pockets where he can maneuver in and get in underneath the safety, or he can get in between a safety and he'll make a catch and it's like great so you're a number two receiver so you're a slot guy essentially now he goes outside he has outside routes 
But he's, you know, posted on Instagram, he can go catch a ball when it's flung out of a football launcher. Where is that on the field? He's constantly covered all the time. And when it comes down to the fourth quarter and your backup quarterback is relying on you to make a play, you once again cannot make it. And yeah. this guy, 13, and the way he was talking too, like Marquise Brown, I have the article up here. This is basically what he said. He finished the season with 91 receptions, 1,008 yards. So if this had been last year, he wouldn't have made 1,000 yards again. He had an extra game and six touchdowns. He said, quote, I think I feel like I had a weak 1,000 yards, but I'm grateful, thankful. Uh, but definitely not how I wanted uh, to end the season. We started the season off good. One of the key things I talked about was consistency. And I, I feel the later half of the season wasn't that consistent. I feel this is what I, he's already breaking sides with, it's not we, the team, it's I, things I have brought up. I have said this, this was something that was ignored that I said, right? Am I reading into that too much? Like, yes, I think he's just answering a question. But he's yeah. disgruntled all year. Yeah, he was disgruntled last year. What's the point of having dogs if you never use them? Yeah. He, did, he gets yeah. all this criticism. It's not like Ravens fans are like. Well, he was he was hum he was humbled by the Detroit game, he, right? Yeah, I mean, and he came back and he had that great catch in Denver. Um, and he had a couple good games. He had a great game against Chargers. He had a good game against Cincinnati. Some other player came out and said that Marquise Brown wouldn't wouldn't start on any NFL team besides the Ravens. I think it was absolutely not. Player. And That's, I was just it, like, damn. This unless is a slot. Think of you. That's he was starting that's a slot. That's ridiculous. Well. That's and we're ridiculous. paying $13 million. I'd rather just go in the draft again and pick another guy. Like, this draft isn't going to be heavy with uh, quarterbacks anyway. So you might get good value for a wide receiver who might move up because of that. I don't know, man. I Like, we're going to have a decent pick this year, right? We're going to be somewhere in the middle. We're 14. He can play in Jacksonville. He's not, we're not going to pick up his fourth-year option. He's going to play this year, end of his contract, and then he's going to be a free agent. Yeah, and we'll see. It. We'll see how good or or how bad he plays and go from there. He, but he's going to be a big part of our offense, I think, whether you guys like it or not. I said hard. that last year about this year, and I was right in the beginning. And he'll then have a part. He'll be he number fell two. off. He'll be he'll be a number two or three. Mark Andrews is number one. Absolutely. Rashad, Rashad, Bateman. Rashad yeah. Bateman could take that number two spot. Hey, there's something we were right about. Remember in the beginning of the year when we were itching for Rashad Bateman to come back? We were like, man, once we get, once we get this rookie in and we see what he looks like. And he has delivered. They yeah, need to awesome. find him more in the fucking end zone. The yeah, well, Lamar, Huntley, Lamar didn't really, yeah, Lamar didn't really target him. Yeah. Huntley, Huntley targeted him a lot. Josh Johnson targeted him a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's well, like, I don't know why Lamar's not going to him more, but I'll tell you, he's, I guess he wants to go to Mark. Well, Marquise. And Marquise. It's really, what Lamar Lamar is on Marquise's nuts. I, when yeah. it comes, I, I hate it, but it is. So maybe it'd be addition by subtraction. You know, if he gets Marquise Brown out of there, you get in a new receiver to build chemistry with, you start it all over again. I just, it's just not, it didn't work. I don't know. It just, it doesn't work with those two. And I don't think our offense should, I think it's mostly on Marquise. Um, he can bail Lamar out of some of these if he could just go up in man coverage. But he just, he just can't do it. I don't know what else to say on that. All right, so here is the list. I'm not going to give you the whole list because it's a huge list, but I'm going to point out the most important guys, in my opinion, of our free agents next year. So I'm going to say I'm going to name I'm going to say a name, and then you're going to say either with the team or on a different team. Hell and then, yeah. and, no. So let's start with Clayus Campbell. With I say keep him. He is willing to play again. I say keep him just because of how well he is against the run. I know he doesn't get many sacks, but he claws up that middle. His average salary is thirteen million dollars. I mean, he only played half the game. I think he's going to retire. He's going to be what thirty six next year. Yeah, yeah. He's he's, 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 he's he's contemplating. He's a free agent. He's contemplating retirement and also the variable if the Ravens want to pay him one more year so there's a lot of variables there i say he retires in my opinion i think he sh i think uh well he just got he started getting he, he might retire because he's in commercials now he was he's been in a lot of nfl commercials so you know that he's gonna he's gonna have a job available for him working for the nfl in some way shape or form 
I don't think he's on the. I don't think it's he's on the team next year. Not because I think we get rid of him. I think he retires. I agree. I think he. Re- but uh, yeah, looking at his price, unless he like comes back on like a cheap deal, right? But and we're yeah. we're pretty cap strapped too. Yeah, right? I, and we're yeah exactly, and we got to pay Lamar at least twenty four mil next if we if he signs the five year option. Yeah, Brandon Williams. I think, right his head. I think he's got uh, eleven mil average. Yeah, right on, his, on his previous contract, so he's thirty three. There was like a four or five game stretch where I was like, "Where the hell is Brandon Williams?" Yeah. yeah, he missed one or two of those games, but he wasn't showing up like he used to in the run game stoppage. I think he's too expensive to bring him back. I wouldn't be mad to have him as like a lot cheaper, but that's up. I mean, I'm sure he can get more money elsewhere. He didn't. He doesn't jump off the screen at me the way Patrick Queen does. I think with Campbell, Brandon Williams potentially not being on our team next year. And Derek Wolf question mark. I think our biggest worry is defensive line. Our first round pick will go towards the defensive line. The way I'm looking at these free agents right now, we had no pass rush all season. Better, it was better than and last year, but yeah. But and then we ha- we're losing Campbell. We're losing Williams. I think defensive line is the biggest thing for us. Um, next person, Pat Ricard is a free agent. They're bringing him back. Keep him. Yeah, keep him. He means too much for the city. He means too much for the team. He gives an element to their offense that there is required because they need to run the ball, even though we never did it this year. Yeah. Uh, when we get our court, when we get our running backs back, Pat Ricard's going to be a big yeah. uh, block stopper. Though I was impressed with some of the tight ends. We had Hawkinson out there. Mm-hmm. Not Hawkinson. No, uh, the guy that plays 80, for the Lions. Eighty-five. Yeah, Tomlinson. Tomlinson. Yeah. Eric Tomlinson, Tomlinson yeah. and then uh, we. Uh, I mean, Nick Boyle. Once he gets healthier, he'll fill that yeah. role too. But. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think they keep him. He means too much. Yeah. Him. And it's cool having Absolutely. a fullback. He's versatile. He can catch. He can block. He can run. It always just, takes, like, three guys to bring him down. Yeah. Um, I just hope I just hope he's not too expensive. Because yeah. his, his average was 33.6 mil, which is crazy for a that fullback. Is, well, wow, that's, that's crazy. Expensive. I guess that's they expensive. compare him to use check over there, former Raven that's now over with the 49ers, right? Yeah, They'll maybe. probably compare those two salaries and see if they can. Yeah, he's going to be pretty expensive, though, for his position. So I don't know if it, I don't know if it's gonna work out, but I hope it does. He's worth it. Jimmy Smith, longtime Raven. He was on a significantly cheap cheaper deal. He was a three point five compared to Brandon Williams, but defensive linemen get way more money anyway. He but, says he wants to be a Raven for life. Yeah, like he does not want to play anywhere else. Yep. All right. Well, give him a coaching position. Don't Dude, we need field. cornerback depth, man. We need cornerbacks. Yeah, I'd rather Corner, have him make get, make, agree to a cheap deal because he wants to stay as opposed to going to the market and having a signed guy more than, expensive than that. Yeah, we're already cap, the, we're already cap strapped. We can work with Jimmy. Make Smith. the man a safety then. Don't make him a cornerback. He's not fast enough. Well, that, I think he's a hybrid. And just, he, I think he well, was a don't hybrid. Put him at, don't he put played him both this year, but he had to play. He had to play cornerback because there was not Yeah, because we're injured. But I mean, make that man a safety, and I'm cool with it. I hope he. I hope they bring him back. He's kind of like what Ladarius Webb was for us at his last two years, where he was like converted into safety. He's there for depth. He knows the defense. He's a long time. He won the Super Bowl with us. He's a long time Raven. I hope they keep him. I hope he. I hope he comes back on a, you know, a cheap deal. Make because here's safe. another cornerback that's a free agent, Anthony Avery. What happens? Oh uh, yeah, he's gonna, about- uh, we're losing him. He's gonna get paid. By somebody, I think oh, he's yeah. gonna get paid by somebody too. I think he's gone. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I, he showed enough. I liked him before the season. I, when Marcus Peters went down, I looked at Anthony Avery and I saw him playing the preseason, and I was like, you know what? It could be worse. Like he's he's real. I think he's all right. He played all right this year. I think he played well enough to prove that he could go to another team that's desperate for secondary help. And he can okay. fit in. I, I, I think he's going to – how old is he? 27. Teams will be interested in picking him up. Yeah. I think he's gone. Yeah, I think I he's gone too, unfortunately. If we have, if we have young, I mean, I guess we at least have young still. Maybe they make him a favorable deal, though. I mean, again, we're strapped with corners. But I just think that – I, I just think he's going to take a shot. Be a starter. Yeah, the money, the money we gave Humphrey and the money that we paid Marcus Peters and the money we gave – Trayvon Young, I think it's going to be hard right. to keep favorite too. Uh, yeah. Those are th- I I would much rather pay those two outside corners and lose favorite. Young's cool. That's that's three set. If we can keep all four, 
after after April getting the work that he got this year, and we were able to keep all four next year, that's dangerous for anybody playing us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, I, I I I think we're going to draft a lot of cornerbacks this year because I think we're going to get secondary help in the draft. Yeah, yeah, big time, and yeah, and safeties. Bradley Bozeman is a free agent this year, so that's center, center guard, center guard combo. He'll be back. I I think he'll come back. They're going to well, make. We, they're gonna make offensive offensive we need help. offensive line help. Well, we yeah. we signed Cologne, so we have Cologne. I don't think he's ready. Well, we gave him a four year contract. Ever since Marshall Yanda left, it's sort of like this this offensive line. It's Stanley being hurt for two years. It's just been yeah. like a mess. I feel like they want to keep guys. For their offensive line, unless they think they can get somebody better out there, maybe you get a guy in the draft. That might yeah. also be something, a position that I wouldn't be surprised if we took a guy to defend Lamar, but I think he stays. I think they make a deal. I think they cut him a deal. Maybe. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be surprised if he's gone. Brad, what do you think? Your namesake, Bradley. Yeah, Bozeman. right. You're the Brads. What do you think of your fellow Bradley? Bradley? Keep, yeah, resign him. I mean, we don't have it. We don't have the opportunity to lose Lyman. Here's another guy, not that important, but he's. One of our last remaining Super Bowl guys, Pernell McPhee. Yeah, I think Didn't he's going to he leave and then came back. Yeah, he left, came back. And how old is Keep he him. now? He's 33. Keep him. He probably played like 20% of the snaps. He's good for the locker room, though. Old head, knows the old ways. I'd say keep him in the locker room. He's cheap. Yeah. I would say keep it too. I because uh, if we're getting rid of two guys on the pass rush side, if you get rid of three, you're pretty much blowing the whole fucking thing up. Madam Buike looks good. Keep Pernell McPhee. He came so. back for a reason, right? I mean, he wanted to play in Baltimore for a second stint. If he's a good locker room guy, keep him. Yeah, I hope he stays. 33, give him a couple more years, and then we'll see where we're at. You know, no reason to rush in anything. We got to pay Lamar. So I, so potentially next year, Justin Tucker and Sam Cook might be the only remaining players from our Super Bowl team. But also, you guys got to remember, as much as we're talking about free agency, there's also that chance that we can pick up some money to fill in with positions of people we lose. So. 100%. Yeah, we're going to have to. My plan was for Flock Squawk in the future during the offseason. Yeah. We pick some people up. We're gonna. We're definitely going to talk about the impact they're going to have on our roster. Like That's always an option. I just feel like the Ravens are so cap-strapped right now. They're one yeah. of the teams that doesn't really. And then they're going to pay Lamar. You know, they just they just broke Mark Andrews off. I mean, they're getting ready to open up the, the pocketbooks. I think there are going to be casualties of people that are already on this team. And I think that they're going to go in order to make way for some of these mega trades that are about, or these mega deals that we assume are going to be signed. We're at the bottom half of the league in cap space. We have, we have 15, yeah. 15 and a half mil. I don't know if we're going to make much splashes in free agency. I, I think I, I would I would like Houston over McVeigh personally. I think Houston has, yeah. even though even though Houston's older. I think he played Houston, great this year, I yeah. thought. I, there was always one play every single game where I was like, Justin Houston would make a huge play. And I'm like, okay, nice. Houston, guy think, we picked up this year. I think Houston has more in the tank than McBee. What happens to our running backs? Can we give them like a grade? Like, what do you, how do you think they provide? I thought Devonta Freeman, if I were going to give him a grade, like a B, you know, B like minus. A, B minus is what I was going to say, Brad. Yeah, he, got, he gets a B minus for me. He came in and on uh, short notice had a pretty good season. He's going to get looked at by some other teams looking for backs. You know, maybe he goes to um, the Texans or or some place that they they need a guy to run the rock. Like I don't know. And yeah, then Latavius Murray went ballistic the last game of the season. Yeah, 150 yards carry on 16 carries, insane. Yeah. But it'll be good to get our guys back. I can't wait. I can't wait to see J.K. Dobbins. I feel like they've disappeared from my life for like a year. Yeah. Um, and I hope their rehab is going well. We got 10 picks in the upcoming draft, and our first round pick is 14th pick. So we got a lot of capital. We have a lot of picks to make up for a lot of these free agents we're going to lose because we need to save money to pay Lamar. So we got to pick a lot of cheap rookies up. Facts. Yeah, I agree completely. All right. Hey, guys, this is, uh, this is the last block squawk of the regular season i want to thank our subscribers and all the people who have listened thank you so much for your support thank you for your words of encouragement special shout out to chris twig for leaving comments in the comment section we always like we really appreciate the support like yep. and his comments are always very um very positive and that's something that the internet could probably use more of especially these days but i want to thank my hosts chad brad 
Asher, thank you for mm -hmm. making special appearances on the podcast. It's good to see you. It's kind of crazy that we captured this moment of your life, Chad. Like you had a kid for the very first time, and there's yep. going to be like evidence of some of the shenanigans that went on with that. Like I think that's oh, yeah. just awesome. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I appreciate Brad also. Like, thank you for waking up to do this. You work a night shift and you're hustling to make things happen and he, brad gets up early to do this podcast with us and then he goes right back to sleep because he's got work at night mm -hmm. yep i can't tell you how much i appreciate you yeah, got doing you, this with us and i'm gonna have fun doing pods with you guys in the future we're gonna be covering oh, yeah, man. And stuff um and you're gonna see us in a few more places i hope to have other podcasts with other hosts coming up that we're going to put up on Flock Squawk. So I'm going to talk to some people about that. And this has been great. I can't wait for the start of the next season already. I just wish we had more Ravens stuff to talk about. But unfortunately, getting bounced from the playoffs uh, yep. usually puts a damper in those things. So thank you, boys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Thank ben. you. Thank you, and, Benjamin. And young lady. Yes. Thank you. Ben thank Benjamin, you. You, you made it a lot more professional. Uh, the way you do all your little your research, you send us the documents. He's, he sends us a Google Doc every uh, mm -hmm. every night before we do our little thing, so we know we're coming in and talking about. And he kind of sets it up and spitballs everything. So that's uh, I appreciate you. You definitely made it a uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So that was cool. It's been really, it's been a lot of fun, and there are a lot of people that I want to bring in too. Like we have a Tennessee Titans fan that I would be very interested in doing a fantasy football podcast with if he's down yeah. to do that. Brad, I'd want you to host it. That man knows football. Too. Right. I'd like to bring him on. I want to do a fantasy football podcast eventually that we could run through the entire season. It's just a matter of freeing up schedules and making stuff happen. So yeah. I'm trying to coordinate with that. And you two have been awesome co-hosts to, to do this with. It's been a real pleasure. And I'm looking forward to the offseason. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a bunch of stuff coming um, for all the subscribers that listen to us. Thank you so much as well. You guys are the reason why we do this. And we have a whole hell of a lot of fun doing it. I'm going to just close out with this because I've talked to you two a lot. This is for Asher. Here's my defense. Okay. All the great heroes that you ever read about, right? They all start off in adversity. And as the story progresses, Things get better. The heroes go on their quest. They find the magic sword. They slay the fucking demon or whatever it is that they got to go do. And at the end of the day, it's a positive story. Asher's record as a newly minted Ravens fan is not great right now. It's, it's not great. It's the worst and possible I, outcome. And I was like, oh, this, this it's not like he brought it up. He brought up the curse. This guy right here brought up the curse. And I was like, I don't think there's a curse. I think it's just. Heroes have to go through adversity before they get to the other side. You know, nope. we've been, and I think it's going to come a lot sooner than we think once we get our guys back. So I that's what so. I would say. I don't think there is a curse. No curse. She's always, you know, she'll get her first win next year. Well, this year, next season. The preseason. If we count the preseason, that's, we're undefeated in the preseason. We could just keep going. Preseason, preseason doesn't count. She needs a regular think, season. She needs a regular count. season win. She's O and what is she? O and five? O and six? O and five. She's O and five. Can you believe that's how the season started? There were all these articles about oh, how yeah. crazy it the Ravens have won 17 preseason games in a row. And yeah. look what happens. It means absolutely nothing. Everybody absolutely. everybody got hurt, man. It's crazy. Great. We have I think this is I think we have a I know I hate people that make up excuses, but we have a legit excuse, man. We I do. think we have I think we have a legit excuse. 23 plus guys on IR. Some of the biggest names on our defense. Our our biggest player, our quarterback, missed the last six, five games. Yeah. Like, what can you do, man? And even, Did like, it? the people in the media, there's whenever they talk about the Ravens in a matchup, they always just go, ah. Oh, yep. Ravens just dealing with a lot of injuries right yeah. now. And they almost say it like it's a bummer. Like, it's a shame because they know what the team could have been this yeah. year. And they're just like, we're in the middle of a down Ravens year. You know, they can't yeah. talk about Lamar being amazing. They can't talk about us making a run for anything. So I think, I think the mainstream media roots for Lamar because it gives something for them to talk about. Yeah. Um, and it, I think they think it stinks when the Ravens lose. 
And we obviously think it's the end of it. Absolutely. Definitely. That's just not that good. All right, boys. Um, I will see you guys. I'm going to have to call you guys to pitch some of these ideas. So I'm going to call you guys later on in the week. Does that sound okay? Sounds yeah, good. Cool. All right, boys. Asher, get some sleep. She's out. She's out, bro. Those are the good days. <laughs> Those are the good days. Okay, I will see you guys next week. I'll give you all a call. Thank you so much to our listeners again. Go call. Thank you. Call, call. Peace. Peace. Love, call, call.